We are back with Worth It Lifestyle season four. We did it. I have not been here for any of the other ones. Oh, really? I'm taking credit. <laughs> As our co-host, we have Jennifer Ruggiero, my good friend. What's up? Today we're doing backpacks, so we're gonna start off with a what's in my backpack tour. All right, hell yeah. What do you got? Well, I always like to keep my toiletries in there, my laptop, an extra pair of socks and or underwear, depending on what's How happening. How did you find that so fast? Some type of toy. Mm, I um, like to keep the essentials. Very important oh, products. God. You have money from... I went to London earlier this year. <laughs> That's enough wow. out of me. What's happening uh, in your neck of the woods? Laptop, of course. My creative journal, which I keep within the plastic wrapping. Very Midwestern mom of you. It makes me feel at home. I have my personal journal and my Bible. And what I carry with me all the time. This is my protractor set. You just never know when you need a straight edge, that's all. I rarely do. You ready to hit the road? I'm so ready. Let's do it. Oh, by the way, we got Annie. <laughs> Annie loves backpacks. She we does. all know She's that. She's so many. She's a backpack fiend. She's as many backpacks as I have kids. Today on Worth It Lifestyle, we're going to be trying three backpacks at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Worth it, baby! Oh, it feels easy. good to hear you say that. I like knowing exactly what we're doing. What's cool about backpacks is that they're a gender neutral option that I think can be dressed up or dressed down because they're so versatile. Off the flip and tumble. Off the flip and tumble! Hi, I'm Eva. This is Hito. We're co-founders of Flip and Tumble. We're here in our studio today and we're going to check out our compactable backpack. Flip and Tumble, great name. Uh, where do they come from? So our first product compacts down into a little ball. Basically, you're flipping the fabric into that ball. The ball can kind of tumble around in your purse or everyday bag and flip and tumble. I thought you guys were just like big fans of gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're not a gymnastics studio. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about the backpack we're going to be seeing today? So we were going to show you guys our full-size backpack. The backpack is actually made out of a material called RPET. It's a really neat material made out of ground up plastic bottles. It's really nice because it diverts plastic from the landfill. And it also allows us to make the backpack using less energy. And doesn't rip. No problems no. with that. It actually really. has a ripstop pattern in the fabric, and those checkers keep any small holes from increasing in size. It also looks like it's pretty easy to wash. Yes, all of our products, we make sure they are all machine washable. Once a bag is like hit like an airport bathroom, right. it's like, mm, mm, it's a little bit yeah. dodgy after that. It was really important that this worked for um, lots of different things. Traveling, hiking, if you're heading to the gym and you just want to stash some sneakers. But we also wanted it to be compactable so you could just stash it in a suitcase and you always just have this extra bag handy. Designing a bag like this, can you just yeah. walk us through the process? So when we go to design a bag, we usually start with a need we see. First thing we do is start just sketching, where we can quickly iterate a whole bunch of ideas and see which ones we like. And the next thing we do is we like to make these little paper models and fabric models so we can start to see how those forms look in 3D. Then we'll start making full-size prototypes, give them out to users, and then get feedback. Just do that until we feel like, okay, we've got a good product now. Jen, let's, let's try the backpacks. Okay. So we're gonna try packing the backpack now. Should we race? Let's do it. Okay, can we get a countdown? Mark, get set, go. <laughs> you know what's amazing? I did it! I did it! <laughs> you can put it in a backpack. You could carry two backpacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can put it in my bra. I love things like this. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> it's right in there. And what's nice is it actually frames the face. I'm actually amazed at how easily these buckles fit in there. I was kind of worried they would be disruptive to the process, but it's designed very well. Everything fits. I'm going to put the stuff that I would carry around on a day-to-day -day basis. My creative journal, electronic devices, my personal journal, my Bible. Is that, is that what you carry around with you? Uh, I have more. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> there we go, okay. See? Versatile. Good to go. Those are good for this little people. Oh. <laughs> Backpacks. How do I look, Jen? You look cool. The silver looks really good because it matches your outfit. My outfit, my hair. It is crazy how much you can fit in this. It is really comfortable, actually. They actually have this sample backpack that can hold the maximum weight, and it is a 35 oh, pound bag of sand. Oh my god. <laughs> Would you ever pack your backpack this heavy? No. Have you ever it? Yeah. No, th I'm not trying to be funny. This is legitimately hard for me to stand. <laughs> <laughs> this backpack can handle the weight. I cannot handle the weight, but the backpack is handling the weight very well. <laughs> All right. Off to New York. Flip 
tumble. What do you think? The fact that it had straps, it had buckles, and it could still be rolled up is pretty cool. Backpack fact. Oh, we're doing that? We're okay, doing hell yeah. An early version of the modern backpack was the book strap, which was really just a leather belt that held your books together. You could then just throw the bundle over your shoulder. Kids used these for their school books from the 1900s through the 1930s. Anyone who's been to like a public school knows that like the textbooks you get are giant and always hardcover and they weigh 75 pounds. Nowadays you like read textbooks on tablets and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can read ebooks now. So. Yeah, but it's, it's not the same. No, it's not. So where's our next location? We're going to a tech oriented factory. A tech-oriented backpack? That's all I'm gonna say. My backpack is pretty low-tech, but I do always try to carry around some type of charger, some type Ooh, of electronic. Oh, you might like this backpack. You think so? Then. Okay. Teaser alert. Oh, <laughs> my interest, it is peaked. My name's Shane McQuaid. I'm the founder of Voltaic Systems, and today we're gonna to look at the off-grid backpack. We started the company about 15 years ago with the solar backpack. The original idea, I was actually living in Spain, and I had this big clunky charger that I was carrying around in my bag, getting lots of sun, but, but never actually pulling this thing out. And I realized, you know, somebody should stick that panel on the outside of the bag. If you were to explain to a child how solar works, <laughs> how would you explain it? Uh, okay, us. Yeah. And so we start with the solar panel itself. We're using sun power cells. When sunshine hits that material, it throws off an electron. That gets captured by the wires and those wires channel that electricity back to a power bank. All of the bag is designed around that panel and the battery. And we've got it in a side pocket. You can sort of swing the bag around, take your phone out, plug it back in without necessarily taking the bag off. This thing is totally like rainproof. Like you could take it out in the middle yeah. of like a storm and it'd be like super chill. You can, yeah. The, okay. The bag is made from recycled soda bottles actually. So it's a waterproof fabric. The panels themselves are really tough. We threw one off a six-story building just to see how it would go and it was fine. Whoa. We've also driven my car over the panel and at least on the flat surface it's fine. Who are the clients out that are buying this backpack? Well there's all the Peace Corps volunteers writing to us every day right. saying I'm gonna be in this village with no electricity for the next year and then there's a whole bunch of people doing aid and humanitarian work. Doctors running around after an earthquake. Yeah. Without power nothing's working. They need to be able to communicate and so it's really useful there. So where do you see the future of solar? So there's still a billion people that don't have any electricity. A small panel can run a cell phone and a light and really change your life. First this, impressions. I was surprised at how you don't even know there's a solar panel here. Wow, this is a really deep water bottle holder too. How deep? It's pretty deep. It's like halfway up my forearm. Also, it's just a deep hole. This reminds me of your backpack. My backpack currently is like pretty large, but it's like a fabric backpack. This one has like structural integrity, I feel like would make it a little bit more comfortable when carrying heavy stuff. Wow. It's like a big tongue. There's a lot of pockets in here too, where you could put yes. like pens, like little notepads. Oh my gosh. And the side pockets have their own little pouches oh, too. Oh wow. So. Okay, I have an idea, Jen. Yeah. Let's create a hybrid Jen Steven backpack. Amazing. Do you think you want to put in this little compartment here? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yes. No, no. You know where you should go? Sunglasses pouch. Oh. Of course. Oh, yeah. Why didn't we think of that? You got to keep these safe too with the hard yeah. shell exterior. What's oh, we next? got a straight tampon here. Hold up. I, uh... Thanks, buddy. We can maybe put... Oh, yes. I have some candy. Candy. Of course. I think we can shut him up. Wait, my protractor set. Oh, okay, yeah, put that in there. I think the real test is its ability to actually charge. Charge, okay, boom. String the cords through a little Where hole. And... Yeah, <gasps> charging. Green! Yeah, look at that. It is a big backpack, I will say that. It's it's large, but the nice thing is there is a smaller model, so I could get a smaller size if I wanted to. Do you want to try it on? I really I want to try yeah. it on. I mean, yeah, that's the perfect size for a backpack for me. Yeah, this actually, I feel like this looks really good. I wouldn't look twice. Like, if I saw this, I'd be like, yeah, it's a backpack. That's you cool. would look twice. I would look twice, because I'd be like, where can I get me one of those? What's next, buddy? Backpack fact! Oh my goodness, I forgot. And also, Andrew's here now. Hi! As backpacks got bigger and bigger, so did concerns that they were hurting kids' backs. So the industry started making wheeled backpacks. Wow. I'm jealous that, like, I yeah. never had one in high school. I think my back is, like, you know, eight years older than it should be. Also, fun fact, both of our backpacks that we've seen so far, the first two, are all made out of recycled materials. That is super cool. What's next on the agenda, buddy? Ooh. Okay, so on the agenda, we're going to take a road 
little trip all the way to Rhode Island Ooh. to see a very special handmade backpack. That's awesome. Oh, it's a road trip. Yeah, yeah road to Rhode Island. Yeah. Road Island. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hi, I'm Lindy McDonough. I'm the creative director and co-founder of Load of Leather in Providence, Rhode Island, and we're going to be looking at handmade leather backpacks today. We use a fully wet white base leather, so that means that there's no chemicals, no formaldehyde, no chromium. We guarantee all the bags for life. You have a lifetime guarantee yes, we for do. a leather bag? Yes. That sounds crazy to me. Every part of our bags are designed to be fixed and serviced. You're investing in one from us, and we're going to take care of it for life for you. We also design them in the way that they're going to patina and look better. Well, the joke is when they're brand new, it's like the worst they're going to look and they're going to get better and better as you use oh, them. That is so nice. cool. Yeah. yeah, oh my God. Forgive me for my lack of vocabulary, but the word patina, can you just explain patina, what that means? Patina is like our favorite word that we use. It kind of tells the story of everywhere you've been. So when you put it down on the ground or the oils from your hands, they'll start to like yeah, look. Yeah, the color will change, right? The color will yeah. change, yeah. So we make a couple different backpacks, but today we're gonna go through the making of the knapsack, which is one of our newer backpacks. The backpack has 48 pieces in it. So we're cutting 48 pieces out of one skin. All the little parts are stitched. They go over to turn and burn. They essentially are tying hand-tied knots and then burning the thread, tucking them back into the hole, and then they smooth the leather over it so it holds the stitch forever. All of the pieces go back and forth with stitching and assembly until the bag is finished. All handmade. All handmade. That's insane. <laughs> We're not trying to be the biggest company, or, but we are trying to make the best bags. The vision behind the company was to create a great job for artists. We do a 30-hour work week with full benefits and healthcare, and then a lot of them have their studio practice outside of that. Whoa. Yeah. This is so cool. It's very heartwarming. I'm just like happy. <laughs> okay, so this knapsack obviously went through many hands. Took a long time to make. How much right. does it cost? It costs $990, but $990 for one backpack for the rest of your life seems pretty good. Price of a cup of coffee each day for one year. Right, cool, so you can pay in coffee. Are these backpacks that you can bring like the beach? Is that okay? Yeah. I bring my tote bags to the beach all the time. I think the more you beat up our bags, the better they look. So I'm not wow. precious about them. They should get used. Okay, that's and good because that's yeah. if you buy something that expensive, I'm always scared to use it. No. Sneakers or uh -huh. I don't you know. Gotta use it. Listen, we came here to beat the crap out of all your products. <laughs> you should totally right, I'm gonna do fight that. some leather bags. Patina! Patina! <laughs> Before we begin, Patina. Patina. New word of the day. Things that get better with time. Name some. Uh Go. wine, dogs, human beings usually. And Leather backpacks. Leather backpacks. Okay. What a natural transition. First impressions of this backpack, go. I think it's just a beautiful backpack. It looks classy. It also just looks very, very strong somehow. It really good. It does smell good. My backpack smells like old chips. It's actually not that heavy, but it has like a heftiness to it mm -hmm. that I appreciate. Like you, when you pick it up, you respect it. Yeah. Ooh, when you open Dude. it up, the smell comes out even more. Let's right. fill her up. Laptop. Laptop. I'm gonna put my travel bag, which is vibrating right now because the razor is on. Okay. Why is the razor on? Turn it off. <laughs> Some snacks. <laughs> Let's see how it feels. It has all of the essentials. The protractor set, tampons, and a laptop. Okay, so we're definitely gonna have to adjust these straps a little bit. Can you do it? I can't see. <laughs> you wanna make it shorter, right? Yeah, a little shorter. Okay. Thanks. I can't totally see it, but I feel like it's gotta look cool. Yeah, that's cool. Could definitely do some damage with this thing too if I really wanted to. You want to try it on? Yeah, I do actually. Okay. I really want to try it. It is just a beautiful backpack. It's hard to say anything else. Functional and beautiful, just like us. It's really bad because I really want this bag now. Like, I I hate this show. If this one isn't for you, there's just like a range of different backpacks you can get. So here's the zipper backpack. It's got like more of a youthful feel. It's like I could see picture students using it or like very wealthy young children. I'm just gonna say, I think this is the most beautiful blue color I've ever seen in my right? life. This is so beautiful. It's more of a grab and go type bag. Okay. Oh, and you can pull the straps like this, and then you have a little sling. Bada bing, bada boom. Am I doing, this doesn't feel right. I have a lot of confidence in like these bags in terms of their utilitarian purpose, but I also just feel like it's very special, like the emotional investment you'll get out of getting something that's handmade and is done with such care, it just becomes even more special for what it like means to you as time passes. Yeah, it becomes a part of you. Yeah. Wow, this, this backpack adventure took us from California to New York to now Providence, Rhode Island. 
I think we've uh, grown a little bit in our patina. We've patinaed up yeah. hard, baby. All right, I gotta ask Jen, mm -hmm. what backpack was the most worth it to you at its given price point? This is a really, really hard question. If I'm honest, it's probably low tough just because I tend to keep things for as long as possible. So if I were to get a bag like that, I know I would take very good care of it and like just grow with that bag, as silly as that sounds. I get it. I just feel so bougie. What is your worth it winner, Steven? Okay, Please. Voltaic, that bag, I feel like is me as a backpack. That's true. Fun, functional, cool, tech chemistry, but I live in the Big Apple. It's Big Apple, Steve. There's energy everywhere, and for that reason, Flip and Tumble is the best bag for me right now. Totally. And it is my worth it winner. You gotta be economical about space when you're living in a place like New York City. Right? Annie? Worth it winner? I you're your worth it winner. Thanks for taking me along this journey, friend. Hopefully we can have you back. I'd love to come back. All right, cool, we're gonna walk home now. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, no come back! <laughs>